I've now already done a couple of videos on pop-ups, but there was one thing that I forgot in my latest one, how to return um, data from those pop-ups. And that was the situation where you can do a light dismiss. So let's go check out how to do just that. Here we are in the super duper demo application. It You can see it's just a brilliantly thought out design. One button, very simplistic. Um, so what we are about to see here is show the pop-up and you've seen this in other videos, so that's nothing special. We can close it and we can say it says close by button. Okay, that's interesting. That gives us a hint. Um, but the other thing you can do is show the pop-up again and um, you can click outside of it and that is called the light dismiss. Um, but whenever we do that, you know, how are we gonna know the user did that? How are we gonna read Return the result then. Well, let me show you. I'm clicking outside, and there we go. Closed by light dismiss. So apparently there is a way to detect that light dismiss and even you know return some data from that. And we're going to learn how to prevent that light dismiss altogether. So let's go check out how to do all of this in code. But before we do, I have to thank again all my members, um, especially Steve Greddy. I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, because he is the latest member to join my channel. If you want to know what that's all about, you can you know join this channel as a member for a small fee a month. There's three tiers, so go check out what is suitable for you. Um, and you can click on that little join button down below this video or on my channel and see what is to be expected. Um, so thank you so much for that but I got a question the other day by um, I think it was a student from a third world country something like that and they said um, I'm sorry I wish I could become a member but I can't because I don't have the means to do so which is perfectly fine I will keep doing what I'm doing I'm not dependent on this income I of course I'm not gonna say no um, it's just you know a nice thing that I will get something back for all the effort that I put in here but I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing um, and you know don't worry about it I love the interactions and I love people like that reaching out and telling me that I am um, helping them um, to, you know, learn something and achieve more in this world. So that is just great. And I'm just, you know, an all right, nice guy. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Now let's go check out what those light dismiss pop-ups are all about. Okay, okay, say it with me. We are here in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. I'm sure you know if you watch my videos what I'm about to explain to you here. Visual Studio for Mac 2019, this is just a file new Xamarin Forms application. Um, on the left, you can see the template that comes out of the box. So this is just the main page and you can see that on the right running on the iOS simulator. Now with hot reload, we can just say here pop up light dismiss dismiss sample and whenever I save that I don't have to do anything and hot reload will update my UI automatically which is very cool this works on physical devices emulators all the things and of course also with Visual Studio on Windows so now let's go to the main event. So first, I probably need to tell you that I've installed the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, so I'm sure you can, you know, figure that out yourself. Go to your solution, right click, manage NuGet packages, and just install the Xamarin.Community Toolkit. Um, and you will have the pop up in there. So that is pretty cool. Now, I've made some other videos about pop ups, um, they should pop up on your screen right now, or you can find it down below in the video description. Um, right now, I'm going to just dive straight into the light dismiss, uh, which is whenever you click outside of a pop-up, um, and we want to return maybe data from that as well, or detect how to, um, you know, whenever that happens. So um, let's just remove all of these labels here and add a simple button with a text that is called show pop-up, and a click handler, um, let's just generate the event for us. There we go. And here in my main page, XAML CS, it should have generated the um, clicked handler. So here we go. And now I want to go up here to my usings and add one to make my IntelliSense a little bit smarter. Um, oh, I didn't install the community toolkit. That's interesting. I thought I did. So I guess I'm going to show you how to install the Xamarin Community Toolkit after all. Um, so go in here, Xamarin.Community Toolkit. There we go. Add package, add it to all of your projects because um, especially the pop-ups, you know, they use renderers for each platform. So you need it installed on every 
project platform that you have. Um, let's accept the license here and wait for that to show up. Maybe it installed it already for this one, so we can say examine. Uh, nope, not yet. So we have to wait a little bit more. Um, what I'm going to do here is add the using for the examine community toolkit dot extensions because the way the pop-ups are implemented is that it extends the navigation. Um, service that is in Xamarin Forms already, um, and it adds an extension method to that, um, which allows you to navigate to a pop-up. So it's done. Should be in here now. Community Toolkit. There we go. Dot extensions. Here we go. And now under my button click, I can say uh, navigation. Navi, if I spell that correctly, navigation dot show pop-up and show pop-up async. Now, again, if you want to know all about this, go to the videos about introducing pop-ups. So I'm going to use the show pop-up async and I'm going to catch that in a result. And because it's async, I need to await it. And of course, I need to create a pop-up just now. Um, so let me do that. Um, I'm going to go here into a shared project, right click add new file and I'm just going to choose a file forms content page XAML and call that my pop-up there we go and we have a new XAML page with a backing CS file uh, but this needs to inherit from not a content page but from a pop-up there we go and let IntelliSense fix that so add using uh, examine community toolkit UI views it will add that right here and then it will know about the pop-up of course we also need to do that in our example so here let's add the XML namespace XCT is uh, and we have this fancy cool looking URL setup that will import all the namespaces together um, let's lose this content and now I can say XCT that name can be anything anything you like uh, pop-up so now we have the correct pop-up IntelliSense messes this up for a little, so let's fix that. And there we go. So now we have a pop-up that we can show through our navigation. So if I go back to my main page, I can now here say new pop-up, new my pop-up, excuse me. And now it will show my pop-up. It doesn't really like that yet because we probably need to um, build this and then it will start knowing about all the things and it will accept it without any problem. Uh, there we go. Build successful, although it gives uh, some weird um, uh, messages here, but it should all work now. So for the light dismiss, actually, let me stop and restart this so we can see what is actually going on now. Um, the pop up should be blank because I didn't give it any content. So there there's not much to see. Um, and here we have the pop up. So here you can see it. It, it doesn't do much. Uh, but when I click outside of it, maybe here at the top, then it's doing a light dismiss. So that's called, you know, um, you, you can disable that, by the way, um, but that's like, you know, when, when the user taps outside of it, it will close it, uh, and, and maybe you want to have a little bit of a different flow whenever you do that. Now, to um, actually, you know, disable that, you can just go here and say pop-up um, is like this mis-enabled. There we go. And we can just set that to false. And whenever I save this, I'm not sure if this works with the hot reload stuff. Um, well, it does. So you can set is dismissed enabled uh, false. And now I'm stuck because I have no other way to close this pop up. <laughs> I should have thought about that before. Um, so there's no way to get out of here now. But that is so you know, that is something that you can do if you want to this to be modal and actually force the user to input something or read something or do whatever, um, then you can disable the light dismiss, right? So that's what we've been doing here. But of course, you can also take the I, I think more user friendly route. Um, and you can actually, you know, um, detect that light dismiss and still give back a result. So let me actually add a button here with the text is closed. So we also have the regular close and let's do the click right here. So this in my pop up example, yes, it also generated a button clicked handler. And here we can just say dismiss. Um, I've mentioned it a couple of times before. This is handled in my other video. So go check that one out. Um, dismiss and here you can say, uh, uh, give a result. And because we didn't strongly type uh, this pop up, it will take a generic object. So I can just here say uh, closed by button and notice that this is a string. So I can just do the two string and it will figure that out automatically. So there's that. Um, now I can just close it with a button. But the other thing I can do in this pop up is say override. And we have this um, get like dismiss result. So whenever you call like the um, show pop up async, 
Um, it will also get this get light dismiss result whenever you close it down, whenever you use the light dismiss. Um, so we can override this and typically it will probably return nothing, um, but we can return something here. So we can return another string um, or, you know, you can do complex objects if that's what you want. Um, and we can say closed by light dismiss. And now you can suddenly, you know, detect that light dismiss and maybe go a different flow in your application. Maybe um, you use that pop up to add a new record to your database. And maybe because that light dismiss happened, you will handle that as a cancel action. And you will not do that. And you will return, you know, a, a dummy object to know that it's not something that you want to um, add to your database. I don't know, just just coming up with examples here. Um, so that's how we can do this. And now the really cool thing is that we don't need to alter anything in the code that is calling our pop up. So we can just go about our normal ways and say, um, await show what is display, there we go display alert, um, pop up closed. This is the title. And then we can say result dot two string because in this case, it's just a simple string and a button to close our dialog. Okay. But the cool thing is that whether you close the pop up through a light dismiss or through the close button, it will both go through this path. So you don't need to change anything here and you can just catch the result like you normally would and uh, make a decision based on that. So if we now run the application again, it should build, it should come up momentarily. And we will see the same pop up again. Um, but now, you know, so show pop up close, this is like the normal flow close by button, right? We return the result. And uh, that's it. But now if we do show pop up, and I hope I remove that is light dismissed enabled. Um, there we go. And you can see it's closed by light dismiss. And we simply did that by um, in here in my pop up, override this get light dismiss result. And we can just return a result and we can handle that in the calling code. So that is how you can handle the light dismiss and also how you can, um, you know, return an object from the light dismiss if that's what you need. We've covered another thing about the pop ups. If there's anything else that you want to see about the pop ups, then of course, let me know in the comments. Maybe I will give you a quick answer there or record a whole new video and teach all the people something. Um, so let me know if there is something that you want to see. Of course, as always, please like this video so that it ends up in YouTube's algorithm of happiness and other people can benefit from that as well. Uh, because you know, I'm recording this vi first video after the 5k subscriber milestones. So let's make that 10k, shall we? Um, and of course, subscribe to my channel to make that 10k if you haven't done so already. And I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.